Hi, I'm Dronius and welcome back to the channel. Over the past 3 years, I've been watching the Pokemon Journeys anime weekly on TV since I live in Japan. While this season has a lot of ups and downs during its course, I still enjoyed my time watching it. From the characters, both newcomers and legacy ones, to the overall concept of Journeys being drastically different are just two major things that make it stand out from previous seasons. And since it's ending relatively soon, I figured now would be the best time to give my thoughts and opinions on the season overall. I'll be splitting this video into two sections where I talk about the positives and negatives, as those are the two most important things I want to talk about for the majority of this video. Before we begin, if you could do me a favor by leaving a like on the video, subscribing to this channel, and turning on notifications, it would help my content reach more people, and I would be greatly appreciated for your support. So without further ado, here are my thoughts and opinions on the Pokemon Journeys anime. Now I think the plot for Journeys is a very unique idea for the show as it allows the writers more flexibility with the resources they have at their disposal. Rather than having Ash travel across one dedicated region for an entire season, with the occasional return of one of the previous female companions for a few episodes, he alongside Go traveling through all 8 regions for certain episodes sounds great, and if done correctly it can satisfy so many fans that have been watching the anime since the beginning or for a very long time, while also keeping newcomers engaged to see where the duo protagonist would head next. And it's not just revisiting regions, but callbacks to strategies in battle, flashbacks or references to moments from across the series, and revisiting old locations that make the season a gift for fans old and new. After Ash became the first Alola League champion at the end of Sun and Moon, he decides to travel around the world with his sights set on the Pokemon World Coronation Series, a national tournament that's annually held to determine the strongest trainer, with its ranking system categorized into 4 tiers and everything. His overall goal changes from winning a Pokemon League in previous seasons to climbing the ranks of the PWC, defeating Leon the champion of the Gala region and the strongest trainer as well, and becoming the new monarch in the show. Traveling alongside Ash is Go, a character whose dream is to catch every Pokemon ever since he encountered Mew as a child. Throughout Journeys, these two protagonists of this adventure slowly develop as better characters, while also being research assistants to Professor Cyrus, who offered them a position as research fellows at the newly opened Cyrus Laboratory in Vermilion City, to which they accepted. Seeing Ash slowly climb his way into the Masters class with a team that looks strong enough to win the whole thing makes me feel happy to be a part of his adventure as a viewer. To see it all come down to the most important moment in his life, and witness it every week is a rare feeling that can only be attained by watching each episode go live on TV. I'm not saying you have to see the Pokemon anime as it's being broadcasted, you can easily find the episodes online for free later on. It's just better to experience this historical moment alongside everyone else for the first time to avoid spoilers, because when that happens, it'll be a moment you'll never forget. Like some people, I was never invested in Go's objective that much, yet despite that he was grown from how he was at the beginning of Journeys. Because he's one of the new characters introduced in the anime, and how his catch rate was just as good as a fucking Master Ball, it took me a bit to get used to him being Ash's only traveling companion. However, the more we see of him and certain episodes focusing on Go's path to joining Project Mew, a research team dedicated to the search for the one Pokemon he's been gunning for since day one, it's great to see where he's currently at, and when the day comes for both characters to part ways, it'll be sad to see at first, but one I hope will be a satisfying ending to the season as we jump towards the Scarlet and Violet anime. Pokemon Journeys' strongest elements is its unique story concept and strong continuity with what's been shown. The way it almost feels like a last hurrah to a 25 year running era for the show makes it fun to sit through, and this is where I would end the video on a positive note. Except... What the hell is this? Yeah, for as much as there are good things about Pokemon Journeys, it also has its own set of flaws that other people or I have. The biggest issue I want to mention wasn't even the anime's fault, but rather the production taking place during the height of the pandemic back in 2020. Due to a 3 month delay, the episode count was reduced to around 130 episodes, as opposed to the 140 and 145 count from X and Y and Sun and Moon. So when I look back on the season, it impacted how much extra content we could have gotten but was either rushed or cut entirely. This issue I can let it slide since COVID-19 was completely out of everyone's control and we had no way of predicting the outcome. Too bad I can't say the same thing about some bad choices that were intentionally made. Ash's new team isn't bad in its concept. This team looks terrifying to fight against, but the issue isn't their lack of strength, it's the lack of justification for that strength. In my opinion, aside from Pikachu, Lucario, Gengar, and Surfage are the ones with the most episodes dedicated to them, and the ones with the most development. Dragonite has a few episodes sprinkled throughout Pokemon Journeys that give her a spotlight and some battles to herself, but has little to no on-screen training or growth to justify why she's one of Ash's powerhouses. Dracovish has gotten the worst of the entire team. 
Ash obtains him in episode 50 as a fossil, and before the Masters Tournament it only gets two important battles against Iris and Drasna, with no on-screen training except for episode 114, for less than 10 seconds. It's frustrating because his team looks strong enough to help Ash achieve his goal, but one of the biggest reasons why many fans love his previous teams from past seasons was because they had a lot of screen time and development to be likable to the audience. Anytime we see Ash's old mods, we knew the writers would treat them right most of the time. With Journey, some of that development was there, but it wasn't enough for me to truly like them or justify how powerful they are. Other issues people in the anti Poke community have have been the Gala region getting less representation than other regions. Several people and Pokemon like Chloe and Go's Grookey start off as promising characters only for them to be a waste of time by the end of the stories. The lack of extra episodes thanks to COVID, the fact that the series director was replaced with a different person halfway through, and a bunch of production issues behind the scenes has caused these and a few more issues to occur in the first place. So after watching this season from the beginning until now, I have to ask myself, was Pokemon Journeys a good gift to the anime? Is this the best way to send off an era of a series that's been running since 1997? My answer for this is both yes and no. This season isn't perfect. It has so many flaws that keep this from being something that truly stands out. But where there are negatives about Journeys, there are also positives about the show. The basic concept sounds unique, and the strong continuity and amount of legacy characters returning for an episode or two is a real treat, with some of them serving a purpose to help Ash, Go, or even Chloe developing their characters or Pokemons is fantastic. The new composer for Journeys, Yuki Hayashi, does a great job taking over the anime soundtrack following Shinji Miyazaki's retirement in 2019. As a fan of Hayashi's work on My Hero Academia's OST, this was a real treat to listen to. The animation can be a hit or miss, but I enjoy the visual spectacle. However, the number of production issues, off-screen training for Ash's team, and lack of development of side characters like Chloe, among many others, can sometimes ruin the experience for me. Despite this, I enjoyed my time watching Pokemon Journeys from start to finish, and while it may not be the best season in the entire show, nor is it the best send-off a show can have, it's decent enough that I give Pokemon Journeys a respectable 6 out of 10. Hopefully the Scarlet and Violet anime will be better than Journeys. And I guess I'll throw this in, in my honest opinion, the worst episode of the season is this. Do I look like a five-year-old? What kind of Playhouse Disney shit is this?